Do you ever feel like there's just not enough time? Maybe you're losing another minute and another minute and another minute. Where is time going? Stay tuned and I'm gonna help you redeem the time. Now is the time to go forward and become all that God has intended for you to become. Today is your day to change your life and live in victory and wholeness. This is Your Path to Destiny with Dr. Candace Smithman. Welcome to Your Path to Destiny. I'm your host, Dr. Candace Smithman, and your life coach mentor. I'm excited today because I'm going to be sharing with you about some amazing truths, how you can redeem the time. I know this is a very frustrating thing when we're on earth time. It always seems like we can never catch up. We're always behind. We're either ahead or we're behind, but we're like, we're never on time. It's the weirdest thing. And we all know it. We all sense it. We can't figure it out. It's like we're on a race against time. Why? Because when Adam and Eve, again, we just got to thank them, right? I mean, you know, they were led astray in the garden by the serpent and they ate the forbidden fruit. And what happened? But we were separated from eternal life right in that moment. And death came in and death, the sting of death is... Uh, time is taken away. Time is cut short. Um, whenever there is a death, there is less time. We can all feel it in our life around us. Even when you're racing and, and rushing around because you're trying to beat the clock, it's because death has come around. It said, no, nope, you will be separated from this time zone and you need to operate strictly within this uh, small amount of time to take care of everything. And it creates stress in our life. Um, everything is run on a time clock and it's always down to the second. So we're either ahead or we're behind, but it never feels like we're right on time. But there was a time when there was right on time. And that's when Adam and Eve lived in the Garden of Eden and they had all things available to them and it was eternal time. But guess what? Jesus has redeemed the time. Oh my goodness. So what does that mean? It means that we no longer have to live like our time is being cut short. I mean, from an earth standpoint it is, but not from an eternal standpoint. And that's what I want to teach you today because when I grabbed a hold of these truths, when the Lord really began to show me this wisdom from heaven, everything was completely changed for me in the area of time. I no longer got upset about whether or not I was going to have enough time or I, I got out of the realm of always having to be ahead of everything or always wondering if I was behind something. And listen, that's complete freedom when you can get on eternal time. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about eternal time. That's a real thing. There's earth time and there's eternal time. But because of what Jesus did, because he redeemed all things through his death, burial, a shedding of his blood, resurrection and ascension, Time has been redeemed. It means everything that happened from the very beginning has now been restored. Yes, and how do I know this? Because his finished work on the cross is complete and he now hands that inheritance to us. Do you know you're called to live in eternal time while you're in the earth, but you've got to change your thinking. See, we seem to be programmed for earth time and we should be, right? We, but here's the key. See, we're eternal beings because you become eternity from the moment you receive Jesus in, as your Lord and Savior. But you live in an earth suit that is dying, that has limited time available. But what lives forever is your eternal man, your spirit man and your soul live forever. So they're on an eternal time clock. It's only your body, your flesh, right? Which is on an earth time clock. And so we can beat earth time. Yes, we can. I'm getting younger every day. I'm telling you. So are you. You're getting younger every day. Why? Because you're on eternal time from the moment that you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. I know you say I've got arthritis in my knee, my back hurts, my blood pressure's high. I know there's a lot of compa complaints about the body that seems to be dying every single day. However, that is the effects of the earth, not the effects of eternity. And you have the power to turn back time and have all things redeemed. I'm going to show you that 
in the word of God. See, this is where the word is so important because you don't want to just take everything I'm saying and say, well, listen, this is what she said. I don't ever want anybody to quote me. Quote the word of God and quote what Jesus said about it. So we can uh, look at Solomon as our first example. Solomon, King Solomon, the wisest man on earth. He was the one that began to grab a hold of these eternal time keys. And he begins to speak those to us right away in Ecclesiastes. He says, I know that there is no good in them, but for a man to rejoice and to do good in his life. And also that every man should eat and drink and enjoy the good of all of his labor. It is the gift of God. In other words, what he was saying is that our job right now, because he could see ahead. He was grabbing a hold of eternal truths, even though Solomon was in earth time. Solomon's writing and transcribing in earth time eternal truths that were being deposited into his spirit by God himself, by the Holy Spirit himself. These were coming straight from heaven and being deposited. And he says, listen, he says, our job is to rejoice, to do good in this life. He said, we should be enjoying our labor. But how many of us are enjoying our labor? No, because of the effects of the fall of man, we live in curse and toil and all this difficulty. Well, so did Solomon. He was under the same curse that the rest of us were under, but he was talking about how we should be living in the here and now. And he was grabbing hold of eternal truths as he was scribing this out in Ecclesiastes chapter three. And he says in uh, verses 14 and 15, he says, I know that whatsoever God does, it shall be forever. Nothing can be put to it, nor anything taken from it. And God does it, that men should fear before him. That which hath been is now, and that which is to be hath already been, and God requireth that which is past. Now, I know that that was a lot. That was a mouthful, and especially since it's written in the KJV. But I'm going to break this down for you so that you can get it more uh, in clear English. Really, what... Solomon is saying to us when it comes to the redemption of time, he's saying that which has been is eternal. Okay. That's eternal is now in the present earthly realm. So that which is eternal is now presently existing. And that which is to be in the present or in the future already was, he says, it's already been, meaning it exists in the eternal. And God requires that we, which it requires means to strive, to pray, to worship, to be into the word, that which is past, which means eternal. So Solomon is saying that God requires what is eternal. Basically, I explained it to you, past, present, future, the whole bit. I broke down the scripture, okay? But basically, what Solomon is, Solomon is saying is that everything that God does is eternal, past, present, and future. And if we can change our mind and we can get on board with this, we will live more in a life of peace and less in a life of toil. We'll live more in a life of joy and in a, in a life of um, resurrection life, ascension life. We'll live more in this place of of uh, the Garden of Eden that God wants us to live in. He doesn't want us to be living like we're living. Jesus redeemed all things. So Solomon here has not had redemption, yet he's talking about how God sees and how God thinks. And he's talking about the future to come, which is Jesus who has redeemed all things. So these truths that Solomon shares with us, this great wisdom of how to live in the moment is coming from revelation that he receives from heaven, rhema word from heaven about how to prepare our hearts to have an eternal perspective and not an earth perspective. Earth perspective is cut short by time and by death. Eternal perspective is fullness, completeness, shalom, nothing missing, nothing broken, and goes on forever. Listen, I don't want you to be confused about what I'm sharing, so I want you to stay with me because when you come back, you're gonna learn more truths about redeeming the time.
I'm so excited that you stayed with me to learn more about how to redeem the time. How can you redeem the time? Because Jesus already redeemed the time. That's what gives us the power. That's what gives us the strength to be able to live in the earth time, in the here and now with these eternal truths. Jesus has resurrected our time, basically, and we no longer have to live in fear of having it be cut short. The moment you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you enter the eternal time zone. Now, if you can learn to keep your mind in that space, then you're going to be living in a place of peace and a place of joy. Now, I just want to share with you a uh, scripture from Ephesians chapter 5, verses uh, 15 through 17. Here, the Apostle Paul is talking to the church at Ephesus, and he wants him to understand the redemption of time. He says, see that you walk circumspectly. That means diligently. Walk diligently, not as fools, but as wise. Redeeming the time because the days are evil. Wherefore, be not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. So here's how I want to encourage you. The will of the Lord is that we get on eternal time and stop being on earth time. Now you might say, Candace, that makes absolutely no sense. Like I have to live on earth time. It's 24 hour schedule. I got something to do 24 hours a day, eat, work, sleep, all the things that take place in 24 hours. Well, that is true. There is day and night, right? That is part of it, okay? However, it is not to be a toil during that time. Eternal time means no matter how much the seasons and night and day and the shifts between the sun and the moon happen, no matter how much that happens in the earth realm, it was supposed to be done eternally. In other words, it was never to be cut short where we would never be racing. We would simply be enjoying the eternal moment in the present. That's what Solomon was talking about. So think about that. Do you enjoy your moments in the present? Do you view them as toiling or let's get through this quickly or I'm not really here in this moment, I'm ahead or I'm behind? I'm not right here. I'm afraid I won't make it to the next place. I'm afraid because I just left the last place. I'm afraid because of what yesterday was. I'm afraid of where I'm going. Do you see what I'm saying? All that fear and all that toiling comes from the fall of man. It does not come from God's heavenly perspective, which is fullness, completeness, abundancy, shalom, peace, nothing missing, nothing broken, the finished work of Christ, seating us with him. We have ascended with him, seated with him in heavenly places. That viewpoint is not in fear. Therefore, time in the earth can rotate, but we are right on schedule with it. We are living out what was already written in the scrolls is now taking place in the earth realm. It causes us to slow down. So when the apostle Paul says, walk diligently, not as fools, but as wise. It means he's saying, listen, he's saying, I need you to get on eternal time here. He says, I need you to understand that time has been redeemed, meaning Jesus has bought back for us so we can now rest while we work. We can now move in the abode of God while we're working. We can now be on the eternal time in the earth time. Now, let me explain this to you a little bit more because I know this is difficult topics. I share this in my new book, Heavenly Portals, how eternity impacts your past, present, and your future. If you can grab a hold of this, you are actually going to enjoy your life. You're going to slow down a little bit knowing that you're not behind schedule. Now, let me tell you, that's really, really important. That means when you're stuck in traffic, you're not going to be freaking out because you're actually right on time while you're in traffic. Now, I know you might say, but listen, I'm going to show up late to work if I'm in traffic. Okay. But you're showing up late on an earth time schedule, not an eternal time schedule. And guess what? Eternity rode in that you would be late to your job while you got stuck in traffic. It was already written. It's now playing itself out. The Lord spoke to me years ago and he says, Candace, everywhere I send you, the work is already done. Now listen, okay, I'm a sent one. I'm an, I'm an apostolos, right? Someone that goes, I'm sent where God calls me to go. The whole church of Jesus Christ is an apostolic church. We are sent ones going to bring forth the gospel. But everywhere God sends us, the work is already done. What does that mean? It means it's already written. See, Solomon knew this. He says it's already written, okay? It's already been written. 
And now we're just playing it out. So now I want you to think about that for a second. If your life today was already written, then what are you upset about? Rest. Just begin to start moving. Just begin to start going forward. Put one foot in front of the other, but don't live in the next moment too far ahead and don't live in yesterday's moment and get stuck behind. Live right on time because guess what? You're in the will of God. This is why the apostle Paul said, understand what the will of the Lord is. What is the will of the Lord? The will of the Lord is having the mind at peace, the spirit at peace, the spirit that is on peace, the mind that is on peace is living in life, all right? Be at peace because it's already been written and now you're just walking it out. Where do we get an unpeace? We're too far ahead, we're too far behind. Now, redeeming the time literally means that the time has been ransomed. Who ransomed it? Who ransomed our time? Jesus did, why? Because through his death, burial, resurrection and ascension, the sting of death is gone. We've now entered into eternity. We're already on eternal time. See, if you're born again, you are already on eternal time. Slow it down, slow it down. You're already on eternal time. I know you're living in a earth realm, but you can bring in heaven and the eternal into your earth realm with an attitude, spirit and soul and body of peace knowing that everything has already been taken care of. Come on, I might only be talking to a small group of people now, but I know I'm talking to some people. God has already deposited in your spirit. You're moving too fast, you're moving too quick. You're not enjoying the moments in your life. You're toiling too much, too much stresses on your life. Your blood pressure is too high. You, you have heart issues, you've got back issues, you've got all kinds of things going on because you're pushing and you're pressing too hard. Guess what? It's already been written. And if it's already been written in the scrolls, and Jesus tells us that. He says, listen, all the scrolls of heaven have already written down the story, right? The story has already been written in the scrolls of heaven. Your destiny was already written in the scrolls of heaven. And so if it was already written, it was written eternally. It was written. So if it's already written, then all we're doing, you and me, are playing out what's been written every day. What do you think of that? It's already been written. I don't know about you, but that makes me wanna rest. Just take a deep breath. You can rest for a second. This, this moment was already written. And now think about this moment. If you sit quietly in this moment, it's a peaceful moment, it's an okay moment. Maybe for some of you, it's not peaceful. You're going like this, why? Because you're not really in the moment. You're in what's getting ready to happen or you're in wait, uh, do you know what just happened? No, to walk circumspectly, to have the time ransomed means we understand that Jesus bought back all of our time. And listen, he bought it back good, the bad, the ugly. He bought it all back so that we can be in this place of rest, this place of peace, this place of walking in his wisdom. Now listen, these are the wisdom truths of heaven. They come from Solomon, he was the wisest man on earth and he had received these messages from heaven long before and he'd written them down. You know, you listen to the word of God or you read the word of God, why? You wanna know more of who God is and you want his wisdom. Well, this is some wisdom. It's about redeeming time and bringing everything back to that place of peace. Stay with me because I have more to share with you. So Jesus has redeemed the time for us. He has ransomed our loss of time because you will live in eternity, if you know him as your Lord and Savior, and eternity starts today for you. It starts the moment you receive Jesus. And so now our job is to get on God's time plan, to get on his sequences, to get on his seasons, to begin to start having the wisdom of God, the wisdom of Solomon, and begin to get in alignment with what God is doing in the present moment. You know, as a, as a a uh, Christian counselor, um, I 
talk to people all the time who have difficulty living in the present moment, but in the present moment, that's where peace and joy reside, not in what you're doing next or not where you just were. And so it's training the mind to get into a place of presence, present and presence, his presence. So I want to just talk to you for this last bit about Stephen. And we read about the life of Stephen in Acts chapter six. And Stephen was recognized as a man of full faith and power. He did great wonders and miracles among the people. And he uh, actually uh, made some people angry because that's the kind of guy that he was. He was doing miracles and, and healings and all, the, all kinds of things. And he was living by his faith. Well, he ended up getting cornered and had to defend his faith. And he was um, gonna be killed for his faith, persecuted. And um, when he began to, to uh, come forth and begin to share and he was defending his faith, faith, it says in Acts chapter seven, verse 54, it says, when they heard these things, they were cut to their heart and they gnashed on him with their teeth. They said ugly and awful things. But he, Stephen, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly into heaven and he saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God and said, behold, I see the heavens opened and the son of man standing on the right hand of God. Then he cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears and ran up with one accord and cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at a young man's feet, whose name was Saul. Later, Saul became the apostle Paul. They stoned Stephen, those that were angry with him for defending his faith. And he called upon God, Stephen did. He said, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And he kneeled down and he cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. And when he had said that, he fell asleep. So he was a man who lived by an understanding of faith and power and glory and living in a moment. Here he was in the moment and what happened? But a portal opened from heaven directly over him in this moment, all right? This moment where he was defending his faith and he began to step into the eternal time zone that became a reality for him, okay? Now he was stepping into the eternal time zone. He was revealing the glory of the Lord and though he was being stoned and he was being accused and he was losing his life in that moment, heaven opened. And I, I'm sharing him as an example because that's really from the word of God, an example of somebody who steps into living in the eternal time zone. When you live in the eternal time zone, the glory of the Lord surrounds you all the time. You become a glory carrier. You become one who knows and understands the redemption of time by the shed blood of Jesus Christ. So you emit the glory of God and you begin to start operating in his glory. And others begin to sense that as well. You become one who walks in signs, miracles, and wonders. Why? You're not concerned about the next moment and your thoughts aren't on the last. You're focused on relationship with Jesus and being seated with him in heavenly places. So Stephen is just an example. And, and he's an example in the moment where somebody passed from the earth zone to the eternal zone. And it happened through a heavenly portal, the portal opening above him that then released him into the eternal time zone. So I'm sharing that with you so you can see distinctly heaven's on a different time zone than the earth. But if you're heavenly living in the earth realm, then which time zone are you supposed to be on? You're supposed to be on the heavenly time zone while you live in the earth zone. Why is this right? Because Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden were on the heavenly time zone, although their bodies were in the earth. Jesus, when he walked the earth, was on the heavenly time zone while he walked the earth. He taught his disciples to live in the heavenly time zone which means they were defying death everywhere they went. They were uh, uh, performing the acts of God with the power of God and the ways of God through healings and miracles. All of that defies death. Anytime time is redeemed, death has been defied. And what has happened is the victory of sin, death, and the grave has come forth. But not just the victory, it's the whole way of life. Not just sin, death, and the grave as far as the resurrection, but it's also the ascension. The resurrection covered death as far as sin, death, and the grave, but the ascension means our lifestyle now. Our lifestyle now is a lifestyle of victory, a lifestyle of living eternity in the earth realms. Now I wanna pray for you because I know what I've been teaching today 
may be difficult for you to understand. But let me just take you to one spot. I know that trauma has come into your life somewhere. There's a place in your life that you can categorize that trauma was there. And I want you to think about that just for a moment because we're gonna go back to that place where you were traumatized. That was the place where you got stuck in the earth zone. It was a place of death. I don't know if somebody did something to you, said something to you, harmed you. I don't know if you harmed yourself. I don't know if you've gotten a really difficult situation that is forever etched in your mind that transformed who you are. I, I can tell you my trauma time was when my father died when I was nine years old. That was trauma for me and heavily affected my life and even stunted my growth until God came in and redeemed even before my father died with my life and made everything brand new. And so just think about that just for a moment. And I'm going to say a prayer here before we close. I want you to know this that that time has been redeemed. No matter what somebody did to you, no matter what happened, God was there and he knew about that trauma. And he didn't like that trauma. He uh, was against that trauma. He um, came to, ha to teach you to have victory over that trauma, but he, he did all that through his shed blood. So go back to that time space. And let me just pray for you now. Father, I thank you so much for my friend who's watching. Right now, in the name of Jesus, we break off every trauma that came from before anything has happened. We go back to the very beginning and we set that straight. We thank you, Father, that you have redeemed time in Jesus' name. I want you to reach out to me at CandiceSmithman.com. I want to get to know you and then join me again for another episode of Your Path to Destiny.